Hail and Meshes Adventures, it's me, the Spotkin. Welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3, and today I present you my new build for Warlock. So today we're going to make Warlock with Arcfey subclass. Today subclass is all about tricks, lies and magic charm. It gives you cool options to choose from, but be careful, some of your magic won't work if your enemies don't have brains. You need to learn different skills, so you're not stuck using only Eldritch Blast. One good spell that you'll get is Fairy Fire. Other good options are okay, but not super exciting. And you won't find anything that's really amazing or really bad. So overall, picking face up class is decent choice. And it's good for people who are new to playing with magic. So for today's race of choice, we're going with Tiefling. Tiefling will give us dark vision, a little bit dark vision, and a lot of race futures, which will give us nice spells and basic fire damage resistance. For sub race, we can pick whatever you like, but I pick Zerial Tiefling to have advantage on intimidation checks. So we kinda scary Arc Fey dude. Our class is Warlock, of course, and as Warlock we can pick two cantrips. So for cantrips, I recommend sticking with Mage Hand or Minor Illusion, depending on what you like more. And Eldritch Blast. It will be our go-to spell, but we won't actually focus in this build on Eldritch Blast. I got Eldritch Blast in my other Warlock build, so I don't want to make every Warlock build centered around to Eldritch Blast. So our subclass today is Arc Pay, and it gives us a lot of spells, but most importantly, actions. So our action from our Akfei is Fey Presence. We can charm or frighten nearby foes, and we can do it for two turns, just like that. So for our spells, again, X is just no-brainer, you can pick it for every Warlock, but Fairy Fire will do kind of same stuff. Fairy Fire doesn't give you additional damage, like Hex does, but all your party members can benefit from this Fairy Fire, that's why we're picking it. And as Arcfey, we are like filling a role of supportive mage in our party, so we picking sleep. For our background, we picking guild artisan to have insight and persuasion checks. And let's go to our abilities. First of all, skill proficiency, and we add in a little bit into intimidation checks, so we will really focus on them with our sub-race, sub the real Tiefling and Taumaturgy. And second uh, skill can be whatever you like, so you can have deception if you like deceive people, lie to people, or you can pick any of this, like investigation stuff. For our skill point distribution. We got 0 into strange, we don't need it. We got intelligence and wisdom at 10, so we don't have any disadvantage in these checks. We got 14 into dex and con. And max out charisma, 15 into charisma. And from the first level, we add in plus 2 into charisma and plus 1 into dexterity. And we will round up them when we get ability point increase later on. And just like that, our Arcfey is ready to go into the game. So let's talk about equipment a little bit. As Warlock we got proficiency only with light armor, so we will stick with light armor. And we got proficiency with a lot of simple weapons. And our weapon of choice will be light crossbow. So when you get this crossbow, this is your weapon of choice. You want to use this crossbow as your main weapon. Because we won't be focusing around Eldritch Blast, so our pretty high dexterity stat that's giving a lot of damage to our dexterity weapons will work just as nice as our Eldritch Blast without any additions. So at early levels, at level 1, you will play like really supportive mage, so you can just stay behind, you use your Fate of Fire to focus on some enemies, you try to align it on enemies, not on your allies because it's like friendly fire spell too it affects your allies too so you use this fairy fire and everyone who got fairy fired for example will get this fairy fire for 10 turns and this will give everyone advantage on attack rolls against these targets what does this mean it is basically will give you more likely chances to hit and this will give more likely chances to hit for all your party members that's our role as supportive mage but just keep in mind we got only one spell slot so we can use this only one time per battle and then we need to use short rest and this will regain our warlock spell slots but you can use eldritch blast as much as you like because it's just cantrip so level 2 warlock we can now pick our spell, and we will pick Arms of Hader. Just in case we need to disengage enemies, it's very nice spell to use. It's melee spell with some radius, and it will prevent enemies to use reactions. And you can disengage easily with additional damage inflicted to your enemies. So for our Eldritch Invocations, right now we will pick 
Fiendish Vigor to have a little bit more temporary hit points and Chief of Five Fates. This will give us ability to cast Bane on enemies and this will give enemies a penalty to their attack rolls and saving throws. Just like that we continue to our level 3 and now our spell slots is improved, they became stronger. That means we get access to level 2 spells. And our next spell that we want to use is Misty Step. So basically we're picking first of all spells that will help us to reposition in the battle and be safer. Because when you save you can go and disable other persons. Next up is our Pact of Boon. And we got 3 Pacts. Pacts of Chain will give us familiars. Pact of Blade is kinda another build, while we don't have Hexblade Warlock here as subclass, it can act like this and I will have a build for Pact of the Blade very soon. And last but not least Pact of the Tome. It's more like a uh, spellcasting pact and you can pick it uh, if you like it, but for today's build we will stick with Pact of the Chain, which will unlock us 5 milliards. On level 3, as Tiefling, we will get this spell, Legacy of Avernus Searing Smite. So basically you can deal additional 2d6 damage and put your enemy on fire for 10 turns. This spell will require action and bonus action, no spell slots. So you always need to have some weapon in your hand as melee weapon, as this Warlock. And let me show you this Warlock in action in early game. So on early levels you want to cast False Life on yourself and you will get temporary hit points. That so will make us pretty tanky. And then at the start of the fight you need to decide what you want to do. Do you want to use Bane? And this will make it harder for enemies to hit your party. It's useful when you are outnumbered, so there are like many enemies and you got only 4 party members. Then Bane may be an option. But if forces is equal, you can use Fairy Fire or if enemies stand nearby. So Bane cast it in area around you and if you got many targets around you, you can Bane them. But if targets standing nearby, you can go and Fairy Fire on them. So what does it do? It's again doing, giving you advantage on attack rolls and you will kinda have better chance to hit them. Advantage means you roll two dice instead of one. So as we can see we got 95% to hit these imps with our Lazelle bow and we just cast fairy fire on these imps. So this dude saved from fairy fire, they completing dexterity saving throw, but this dude lost to fairy fire and now we get advantage, so it's 99% chance that we will hit this imp. Just like that. And again we got advantage on every attack, so that's very good and nice stuff. While we keep in concentration on fairy fire, enemies is really exposed. And that's where you need to decide, do you want to engage in battle or you want to reposition yourself with misty step to better position on the battlefield. So we can go and teleport to like most perfect, most protected positions that you see. For example, over here. And just like that, you lost all your spell slots as a warlock. So you need to keep concentration on fairy fire and just go use your Eldritch Blast or your crossbow, depending on what is more stronger right now. It depends on your equipment. And don't forget, you can start your fight without using fairy fire. And wait before enemies will come close to your melee attackers, just like in this situation. And only then you can cast your fairy fire, for example. So use your. Eldritch Blast and just like that you fight with early game Warlock A with Arc Phase subclass. So let's level up a little bit more. But just before that I will show you Familiars. You got Quasit and if you cast it outside of the battle it doesn't require any spell slot because it's ritual. So we got this beautiful Quasit of level 1 that his stat block, that his card. So his dexterity based dude. And he got resistance to slashing, piercing, bludgeoning, fire, lighting and cold damage. He got dark vision and he can use opportunity attack. But most importantly he got skills so you can turn invisible with him and just run around as invisible quasit and scare people out with this action. So you can use him as destruction, you can go behind your enemies and use scare stuff so you can frighten persons. And there's one more thing that you need to keep in mind when you cast in fairy fire, enemies doing dexterity saving throw and when you're doing bane it's charisma saving throw. So depending on what enemy is like less proficient, for example 
on this Quasit, better to cast Charisma Saving Throw, so it's better to cast Bane on him. You can press right click, examine and check it out. So let's dismiss this summon, let's use Short Rest so we can find one more familiar and let me show you Imp familiar. Just like that we got this Imp and Imp can fly, so if you got hard terrain, Quasit is walking, Imp is flying, so we can fly over some obstacles over some stuff and imp doing nice damage from 5 to 13 damage with poison conditional he can be invisible too so your familiars is really like squishy guys that's why you want to turn invisibility as often as possible with them and better even start fight with invisible familiars so let's level up more so level 4 warlock will get access to a lot of spells and you already saw the spells of course on previous level and most importantly you will get it for first feat of choice we get an ability improvement and rounding up our dexterity and charisma. And for our spell we choosing hold person to disable humanoids. On level 5 we are going to get new class future and our familiars will gain extra attack. We get access to level 3 spells and one more Eldritch Invocation. So we pick one with shadows just in case we need to use this action to become invisible in the fight. And for our spell we're picking Hunger of Hader. It's another concentration spell that will create area and all enemies will be blinded. I mean even all creatures will be blinded that it's in this area. It's creating difficult terrain so it's hard to move on this area and it's doing large cold and acid damage depending on whether you start or end turn in this area. So let's go to level 6 and as Arkfei you gain Misty Escape. So upon taking damage you become invisible and on your next turn you can cast Misty Step but this Misty Step won't take spell slot. So Misty Escape is this like safety measure, it serves like as Misty Step but don't require you to wait your turn. So if you're just trying to get to some place, just come into enemy and let them kick you in the face one time. Then we get one more spell. And for our spell of choice, we're going with Plant Growth. We will combine Plain Growth with our Hunger of Hader, so we'll create Hard Terrain with Plant Growth, then we create Hunger of Hader, and we can use the spells at the same time, because Plant Growth doesn't require any concentration. So let's go to our level 7. So as level 7 we get additional spells and now we get spells from level 4. And as control supportive mage we want to pick banishment to temporarily banish our target to another plane of existence. It's concentration spell so you need to decide what you want to do. We got additional eldritch invocations of course and we will pick sculptor of flesh. It will give us ability to cast Polymorph as our fourth spell slot. So you may ask why our build <laughs> taking so many disables. But Banishment and kind of Polymorph is almost same spells. This is two concentration spells so you can't concentrate on each of them. So main idea is every spell got different saving throw. So you can understand what is your target main characteristic. And if target got high charisma you don't want to cast Banishment on him. But if target is smart and got high, high wisdom, you don't want to cast polymorph on him, and vice versa. So many targets that got high wisdom will have low charisma, and again vice versa. High charismatic guys always lack wisdom. So we always can disable target if we need to with Isa of spells. So let's go to level 8, and our level 8 warlock will get additional feet, and for now we picking Warcaster because we got a lot of concentration spells so Warcaster is very nice fit for this to keep our concentration going on and for now we begin greater invisibility I will tell you why just in a second but first of all let's continue to our level 9 so level 9 will give us additional spells now we get access to some level 5 spells and for our level 5 spell we're picking Hold monster again it's like disable spell but for monsters so we can disable every enemy we are facing and for eldritch invocations we got a lot of picks right now and we will pick many millions of chaos of course it's level 5 spell slot that will give you ability to summon elementals and let's go to level 10 on level 10 we're gaining one more country but most importantly subclass future so now we can't be charmed just like that. For our cantrips, we can pick whatever you like, Minor Illusion will work. And for our spell, we can pick some damaging spell like Blight. It gives nice necrotic damage from 8 to 64. And we can go to level 
11 right now. Arcfey Warlock now came with Mystic Arcanum. This spell that you won't be able to access otherwise and for our Mystic Arcanum we can pick any spell. Additionally they won't use spell slots instead they are using this Mystic Arcanum and you can cast the spell so once per long rest. If you want long range and necrotic damage you can pick Circle of Death but for our build we pick and create and dead. And we get one more spell and we got kinda all builds that we need. You can pick Dimension Door, sometimes you can use it but most of the time you won't. You can have Hypnotic Pattern to have large radius like Disable with Wisdom Safe and Concentration. But you can have like some funny spells like seeming to disguise all your party members so it doesn't matter too much right now. And we can continue to our level 12 Warlock of course. For this last level of the game we can have one more spell. Again it doesn't matter too much. So pick any spells that you want to play with. And you can have Gaseous form just for fun and investigation because you transform yourself or an ally into tiny gas cloud. It can fall and fit through small openings, it's very hard to damage. So you're basically becoming cloud and you can go travel somewhere, I don't know, maybe some places will have like use of this spell. Or you can pick fly, just whatever you like actually, it doesn't matter too much. For Eldritch Invocations, again, our build is kinda ready. And maybe you just need a little bit more damage in this late game scenario, so you can pick finally Agonizing Blast to add your Charisma modifier to your Eldritch Blasts. And you will have nice Charisma modifier because for last feat we're going for Charisma, Ability Improvement and we're maxing out our Charisma at 20. Just like that our Arc Fey is ready, so let me show you him in action. So first of all you want to create your familiar of course. That's like first things that you will do. And depending on what familiar you like, you summon Imp or Quasit. Let's summon Imp of course for our build. And I was asked does this Imps actually scale up with you? No they don't. As you can see we still got 15 HP level 1 Imp. But that's totally okay because we got our Conjure Elemental spell so we can create any elementals that we like. I already showed fire, earth and air elementals in my previous video, so let's create water elemental right now, just for fun, but I recommend using fire, water is really weird elemental, and this elemental is really strong, so this elemental got nice multi attack, he can attack multiple targets, he can breath in this like area, he can teleport in any location he wants in the battlefield, so this one is really strong elemental. That's his stat blocks, he got 171 HP, 14 AC, and next we can create undead. So we need to find some corpses and create the, from them undead. Just like that we're creating this beautiful Mumi. And Mumi got nice HP too. He, got, he can multi attack, he can frighten targets, 139 HP, 18 armor class, a <laughs> really strong dude. And that's basically our Arc Fey idea on how we actually play. So we got a lot of disabled spells and we can start fight with uh, whatever spell we want actually. So we can, as I told you, can use, for example, plant growth to make hard terrain. So enemies will have hard time to go through this terrain. They will stack up on this and we will have a lot of enemies in this area. Then we just use Hunger of Hater on the same area and everyone who stands in this area will get a lot of damage just like that. You can combine it with your wizards in your party to create some walls and basically trap enemies over here. This will lose, uh, take uh, all your Warlock spell slots so you will be left with only cantrips so you can use your Eldritch Blast and when you're on high levels you can use 3 Eldritch Blasts at a time. That's very nice future for Warlocks of course. But most importantly you can kinda feel safe and uh, use your elementals over here. So after the fight just use your spell slots, uh, just use short rest and you will regain all your spell slots. Just like this, so you can enter into the next fight with your full party of these members. And as I told you we got different abilities so we can use blight for 9 to 72 necrotic damage very strong stuff it will just kill people another cool stuff is arms of hater for 6 to 36 damage if you're just surrounded by some enemies don't forget to use fairy fires it's still useful to have advantage on other crawls it's useful throughout the whole game you can make your party member into cloud 
just like that, so hello, Mr. Cloud. But okay, most importantly, as I told you, greater invisibility is cool spell. So we can use it on any of your summons. So we can make, like, for example, this water elemental. Or let's just show you this on him. Invisible. So he became invisible for 10 turns. And while he is invisible with great invisibility, he can actually attack with advantage. And if he will succeed on stealth check he will still be invisible so basically our main idea of this build to use this invisibility on our strong summons like water elemental and he will run invisible and he will attack some people and he still will be invisible even after this attacks if he succeeds his stealth checks so this idea of the build that's how you play pretty easy and let's go to the fight and yeah while imp uh, is not like scaling he's still doing pretty significant damage and if imp will be invisible for example it's very nice and useful stuff too so this fight starts just go and attack with everyone you can don't forget you can use any, many actions for example fly action as your imp just go and attack people with your mummy and don't forget to get somewhere your crossbow so as this Arcfey Warlock, you want to use your crossbow as your main weapon. So I just want to get attacked right now. We can use Elemental Warp with our Water Elemental and teleport over here and even attack just in one turn. So as you can see, we just got attacked and we can use Misty Escape. So we become invisible right now. At least we should. Yeah, we're definitely invisible. And now you can use Misty Step in the right corner. So make sure to use this Misty Step, because this Misty Step won't require you any spell slots. So you can just get attacked, use Misty Step to reposition yourself to a better position. And from better position, go and use whatever spells you like. As I told you, Fairy Fire, for example, you can just from nice position try to hit only enemies with it. And we are concentrating on this stuff. Sadly, they yeah. succeeded saving trolls. Otherwise, you can use uh, Hunger of Hader or again Plant Crows, working just nice. So just use your summons to have nice ability to attack some people, just like that. So your summons is really strong and cool dudes. And that's our Arc Fae build for today. If you want different Warlock build focusing on Eldritch Blast, this is on the screen right now and other cool videos on Baldur's Gate 3. Make sure to check pinned comment for every build when I will make them. See you in the next videos, guys.